For more than a quarter century, a community project has been held at St. Matthew's Anglican Church to make Seville orange marmalade. Profits from its sale went to outreach. The following is a guide on how to make that marmalade. Details on where to locate a printed version of our recipe are provided at the end of the video. Hi, I'm Joan Lawrence and today we're going to make a video on how to put together oranges and lemons. Uh, a variety of, of weights can be used or numbers. So you can do a marmalade with three oranges, six oranges, twelve oranges. We're going to use sugar and the end product will be a delicious jar or jars of St. Matthew's marmalade. Now it's a very good idea to have all the ingredients that you need and all the apparatus that you need to make jam available beforehand. The last thing you want to be doing is running around trying to find a pot or a dish or a knife. Have it all ready beforehand and it, making jam will be much, much easier. One of the most important things about jam making is that your implements must be sterile. Um, so make sure that your jars have been washed in hot soapy water beforehand. Make sure that the lids of the jars and any small implements that you're going to use are boiled uh, for a few minutes just to make sure that they're sterile before you use them. You'll need spoons, knives, a variety of knives. Everybody has a different feeling for knives, so whatever knife works for you, use it. Um, the next thing is the saucepan for your jam making. It must be a bigger saucepan than what you think you need because jam will boil up. And the last thing you want is jam overflowing the saucepan. The first thing that you have to do is cut the oranges and lemons in half and then get the pips out. All the visible pips have to come out. There'll be more in there that you don't see, and but we'll get them out. So this is, as you can see, just taking them out, putting them into a saucepan. So lemons usually don't have a lot of pips in them, but Seville oranges certainly do. And after the pips have been taken out, if you can get them, you can get them out like this. We're going to squeeze the juice out of the Seville oranges. Now, if you have an electric uh, juicer, all the better. If you don't, you're left with an orange looking like this. And that's what you want. You want all the juice out of the oranges, all the pips out. The lemons are the, the same. And then the pips will be left in the top of the juicer and we'll take those pips out and put them with the other pips that are already in this little saucepan. You can put the pips, uh, or I should, St. Matthew's recipe says to put the pips in a saucepan. Another way of doing it is to actually put the pips into a, a strainer like this, an infuser, and insert that into the, the jam later on. There are two methods of doing it. You can do it in a saucepan with a little bit of water, or you can do it in here. It's up to you how, how you want to do it. Both, both will work equally as, as, as well as each other. So these pips are surrounded by pith and, and segments of the oranges. They all go in. There's, all pe there's pectin in all of this, so it's all good. We, basically, you use the whole orange in making Seville orange marmalade. None of it gets thrown out. And then we have this lovely juice from the Seville oranges, and that is going to go into a separate container. When cutting the oranges, you do it along the circumference. This will make it much easier for you to get the pips out and to, and to get the, uh, the, the pith out. 
So don't cut it the other way, you cut it this way. As you can see, the lemons, lemons and oranges have been cleared of the pulp. The seeds are in a saucepan. And now we're going to cut the orange peels. If you feel that there's, your orange peels are very thick, these, these ones are not very thick, you might want to take some of the white pith off. If you, if you feel that it's not thick, don't bother. There's a lot of, of, of um, pectin in the, in the pith, and it also makes for very good flavor. Now, we're going to cut down the orange peel. I'm going to cut it in four. And then I'm going to very uh, thinly slice the orange peel. Slice it thinner than what you think it's going to look like in a, as a finished product because the oil, uh, the uh, slices will enlarge slightly. So this is how I'm going to do it. Now, you can, everybody runs into problem with the last pieces. Just do, just do what's comfortable for you, what you feel all right doing, and do it like that. You don't have to worry about everything being lemon. Some people like the rinds thicker. It's called thick cut marmalade. Some people like them uh, a bit thinner, and that's called thin cut marmalade. So it's just, now, so for instance, here's some pith that's come off. So I'm going to put it in here into a separate bowl, and we're going to put this in a food processor after. Um, so anything that you feel that doesn't, that is not rind, put it into the bowl, and we'll show you what to do with that. So we're going to take our pith, and our, our pulp, that from, from the oranges, we're going to put them into a food presser or a, a blender with a little bit of the juice. And we're going to grind that down so it makes a mush. To me, that looks fine. It's, it's mush. So now we're going to uh, boil up the pips. Boiling up the pips will extract the pectin from the pips, and the pectin is what will give the gel factor to the marmalade. So we just cover the pips with a little bit of water or to make sure that they're covered. And we'll just boil that up until the mixture becomes quite thick and viscous and then just leave it sit. So we've cooked the pips with a little bit of water and it's made the liquid uh, viscous and it's extracted, the liquid now has extracted the pectin from the pips. I'm going to strain that into the pulp that was done in the food processor. Way. And add your cut peels from the oranges and the lemons. Give it a stir, and voila, that is going to make St. Matthew's Seville orange marmalade. So we've done the first stage of the marmalade. You can continue with the second stage if you want, straight away. If you don't want to, uh, just put it aside in the refrigerator for a day and then start the second stage. So, on to uh, the slurry stage of the marmalade. So to each cup of fruit mixture, add one and a half cups of water. A couple of ways to do this, you can measure out one cup at a time, or you can get your biggest measuring uh, container a uh, big Pyrex, for instance, will hold eight cups, and then measure the equivalent water out. So one and a half cups of water per each cup of fruit mixture. And then you boil that for 30 minutes. So here's the slurry. Um, 
Now, it's very important that the slurry rest for up to 24 hours. Doing this will make the rind soft. If you don't do this, the rind is going to be hard. So make sure that you give it a good rest time up to 24 hours. So the jam is uh, ready to be cooked now, but before we start cooking, we absolutely have to have everything ready once the jam is cooked. So in order to be ready for that, we have to get our jars in the oven. We have to get our lids in a pot with other utensils that you're going to be using. We have to get these boiling. You don't want to be doing this stuff halfway through the, the jam making process. It must be ready the instant that the jam is ready to be put into the jars. So put your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and then put your jars in the oven. Two hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. You can leave your jars in there for a long time. Um, after they've they've been sterilized, after twenty minutes, you can turn your oven off uh, and just keep them in there. They'll stay warm enough uh, to take the to take the jars. The same with the the lids and your processing equipment. Bring it to the boil and then turn it off, um, and that will keep the the jar lids warm for when you when you need them. So make sure that you have your everything that you need to go because you're going to be at that stove now for at least 20 minutes, up to a half an hour, stirring the, the marmalade mixture so you won't be able to leave the stove. So now the fun begins. Here is six cups of the marmalade mixture. We're going to put that into the, your jam making pan. Make sure you get every morsel of fruit and juice. It all counts. And in this bowl, I have measured nine cups of sugar. Pour it all in. And now we're going to put the stove on, put it on to max, and start heating up the mixture and bring this mixture to a boil. You're going to bring it to a full rolling boil. A full ro rolling boil is a boil that you can't stir down. And this, you have to boil it quickly. It has to reach a temperature of 220 degrees Fahrenheit or 104 degrees Celsius in order for it to set. So here we are. It'll take some time, at least 20 minutes, if not more, and we'll just keep on the stove. A good way to stir is doing a figure eight. So this mixture is now coming to the boil. It's at the boil, and it's coming to a full rolling boil. And as I said before, a full rolling boil is one that you can't stir down. So you see it's being, it continues to boil as I stir. Now at this point, it's about 20 minutes from, from here on in to get the gel stage. You can turn the heat down a little bit because you don't want this mixture boiling over your saucepan. This is why we have a big saucepan um, to allow the evaporation to take place, but also for your own protection. You don't want it to boil over. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit to keep it at the boil, but not enough to boil over. So from here on in, it's about 15, 20 minutes. During this time, get yourself two saucers or two small dishes, put them in the freezer because we're going to test the boiling stage of this jam by putting a teaspoon of the mixture onto the saucers that are in the freezer. And those saucers need to be cold in order to do that. So if you haven't done that already, go and put two saucers in the freezer now. So this mixture has been boiling for about 17 minutes now, but I felt it was ready for a test. We put a teaspoon of the mixture into a cold dish that was already in the freezer. We left it for one minute 
and the result is that it we can tell it's ready there is a wrinkle in the mixture now I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but it has gelled there it, it wrinkles you can also test it it's not as 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 absolute foolproof but you can see that when it drips from the spoon it's gelling so this mixture is ready now I'm going to turn it off uh, it would that only took 18 minutes that shows you how different every mixture is it depends on your stove etc so now it's it's done and it's ready to be put into the jars So now we've taken the mixture off of the stove. I've put the jam jars here from the oven. I've also put the, uh, the funnel and the measuring cup and the tops that were boiling in a, in a pan of water, in a pot of water. I've drained those into the sink. So now I'm going to fill the jars. All the time you continue to stir. Stirring the jam mixture prevents the rind from rising to the top. And you should, be, you should have stirred it the whole time that it, that it was cooking. This is really quite important, otherwise there is a tendency for the rind to float to the top. You don't really want that, it doesn't alter the taste at all. It's just that you have all the rind at the top of the jar. So now I'm going to take the funnel, good idea to use a funnel. I'm going to take a one cup measure that has, it's, these are all sanitized now. I'm going to take approximately a, a, a cup of, of the mixture and pour it gently into the jar. I fill it quite high because as the mixture cools, it will go down a bit from the rim. And that is how I fill the jars. So all the jars have been filled now using the funnel, uh, not too messy, but I'm going to take a cloth that I actually had in boiling water, uh, so it's sterile also, and I'm going to run it around the rim of each jar. If the rims have any liquid on them at all, any sugar substance, they won't uh, snap. They, they won't close completely. So that's a very important thing to do to make sure that your rims are clean. So they, this looks good to me. It's also an opportunity now to fill if you find that some of your jars are not filled correctly. So this one is a little bit low for my liking. What I'm going to do is take this jar, which is not quite full, and I'm going to use some of the jam from that and just fill the jars how they should be. So, so this is going to make eight lovely jars of marmalade with half a jar left over as a little bonus. So now we take a lid. You don't need a magnetic grabber, it helps, and you place the lid on the jar that's already, that has been wiped clean. I have my rings over here. The rings are used to make the vacuum in the jar. After the vacuum has been made, the ring is not relevant anymore. It's, it's just used to create the vacuum. So we take the ring. Now your jars are going to be hot. Best to use a, 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 a cover on your hand. Finger tight. I always do it so that it's more than finger tight. I, I close, I, I go so that I can't move it any longer. Sometimes people have trouble with the rings not snapping. There's a variety of reasons for that. 
that the, the rim is not clean or the ring has not been tightened enough. So we'll just continue to do that. And then, probably within a half an hour, maybe 20 minutes, you'll start hearing poppy, popping sounds of the jars creating the vacuum seal. And that the vacuum seal will make the lid go in. Now, if you feel that they're not making a vacuum, sometimes you can help them along by pressing down on the, on the lid. If it presses down, you've just helped it along. So that's how you do the, the jars and the lids. And then you wait for that popping sound to begin. And you know you're a real jam and marmalade geek if you love the sound of jars popping. So the marmalade is in the jars and we're waiting for them to seal and you can see that one of these jars the vacuum has taken place and the other one has not yet. So there is some popping going on in my kitchen. This brings great delight to me. And so we'll just wait. Sometimes it will take up to an hour for it to pop. It, each jar is a little bit different. So that's um, what you're waiting for now. So the marmalade is done now. Um, let's just go over the recipe a little bit. There are some tricks uh, that you can use uh, to make it a little bit simpler for you. I put the pips in this tea infuser. It has a string or a, a metal clasp on it. it, it it's a strong clasp, the pips will not come out of there. And I just put that into the saucepan when I'm boiling the, uh, the mixture. About five minutes before the mixture is ready, I take this out and I just let it drip. And did you hear that beautiful sound of the pop? That brings delight to me. Um, so you could use that instead of boiling the pips in a saucepan. It's, it's just one less uh, saucepan on the go. So that's, that's one of the tricks you can use. A grapefruit spoon is a great way to get the pulp out of the, the uh, rinds of, of the fruit and a sharp knife, whatever one you feel comfortable with, is a great way to cut the, the peels. You can't go wrong cutting the peels, just do what you feel best with, but don't leave them too thick. Um, this recipe of eight jars here, eight and two-thirds jars, was from one quarter of the, of the uh, recipe that's on St. Matthew's website. So this recipe only has three Seville oranges and one lemon in it and nine cups of sugar. So you saw that it was very easy just to make a quarter recipe uh, from the St. Matthew's recipe. Otherwise you might, you'll end up with 32 jars of jam, which is great because then you're going to donate them to St. Matthew's. So you'll find the recipe, St. Matthew's recipe for the marmalade is on the St. Matthew's website. It's under Files and Resources, Pulse of the Parish Newspaper, December 2020, pages 16 to 17. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, you can get me through the office. They have my email and telephone number. And it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video and I hope you enjoy the St. Matthew's Marmalade. We make St. Matthew's Marmalade to help others. Please consider a donation to the Primates World Relief and Development Fund of the Anglican Church of Canada or to your local food bank.